Welcome to this video. What you're gonna be seeing right now is a compilation of my bug bounty recap videos that I make over on Twitter. These are short one minute long videos where I quickly cover a bug bounty report. So let me know what you think of this down below in the comments and enjoy. Welcome to bug bounty recap. It's the 13th of January and let's get into it. An account takeover via SMS authentication flow was possible on Zenly. Now Zenly is an app where you have a live map where you can see your friends and family move around live on the map, which is really cool. However, a, an account takeover was possible in this app. And here's how it worked. So when you want to create an account on Zenly, first of all, you will make a, an API request to slash session create. This will give you a session token. However, that session token is not yet valid. Then you will have to do an SMS authentication. So you will get a text message and you have to fill in the code. And after you've done that successfully, you make a call to slash session verify and your session token becomes valid. Now, where's the issue in that? This researcher noticed that if you make multiple calls to slash session create, that you will always get the same token back until a call is made to slash session verify and then you will get a new token. So what can this attacker do in this case? It, he can just keep on making call, calls to slash session create, keep on getting all of these tokens, waiting for the users to verify, and then afterwards he can just log into their account and take over their Zenly account. So a huge congratulations to yet another hacker for getting this amazing bounty of 1,750 US dollars. This is Bug Bounty Recap, it's the 14th of January and let's get into it. A GitHub access token was disclosed in an Adobe endpoint. Adobe is very well known for their Photoshop software and more, but in this case a researcher used an Nginx off by slash vulnerability, uh, which is a vulnerability where in Nginx you forget a slash in your alias and then the attacker can perform such a payload. But that vulnerability allowed the attacker here or the researcher here to read a config file which contained a GitHub access token. Such a GitHub access token can be used to read the private repositories of Adobe, modify them and even delete them. So congratulations, let me through for this great finding. This is Bug Bounty Recap, it's the 15th of January and let's get into it. A buffer overflow was found in Apache HTTPD, which is an open source HTTP. HTTP server. Now normally there are no bounties for this, however Internet Bug Bounty, which is a crowdsourced bug bounty program, is nice enough to offer bounties for this, which is really nice. But to the vulnerability. So we can see a little bit of code here and we can see this VLAN field is being used in a memory copy here and it's copying this amount of bytes into a buffer. Now if this amount of bytes is too high we have a buffer overflow. Let's see how VLAN is calculated, that's done with and minus CRLF minus 8. Now if and minus CRLF is smaller than 8, then because this is an unsigned integer, it will rotate back to the biggest possible integer, so we will be copying a very big amount and get a buffer overflow. And the researcher in question was actually able to find a payload where that is the case, and we can see that up on the screen right here. Very well done, Chamel, and congratulations on your 2000 USD bounty. Welcome back to Bug Bounty Recap. It's the 16th of January and let's get into it. A subdomain takeover was found on Twitter. Now Twitter obviously doesn't need an introduction, so let's cut straight to the chase because this crossinstall.com domain belongs to Twitter as seen in this who is. Now, the researcher here performed a dig command on images.crossinstall.com, finding that it points towards an AWS S3 bucket assets.crossinstall.com. They found that this bucket did no longer exist and that they could take it over and serve their own content on there as can be seen in this curl command. Well, they can serve their own content, they can um, obtain a TLS certificate and etc. And even if any customers are using this subdomain for something, using it in their systems, then he could obviously serve them malicious content and more. So Ian, a big congratulations on this finding. This is Bug Bounty Recap. It's the 17th of January and let's get into it. A cache poisoning vulnerability was found on GitLab. GitLab is an open source DevOps software provider and let's get into this vulnerability. So cache poisoning. 
uh, a web server hosts a file that is accessible and we can get that file. However, it also accepts a header, the XHttp method override header. Setting this header to head, the server will just respond to headers and an empty response to us. And that's cool. However, there is a cache in between there. And this cache does not recognize this XHttp method override header and it sees these two requests as exactly the same. Therefore, we can poison this cache into believing that a request to this resource should result in an empty response. So now any user that wants to access that file will get an empty response from the cache. Thank you, Justin, for this finding. This is Bug Bounty Recap. It's the 18th of January and let's get into it. The blocked previews feature in Slack was able to be bypassed. Now, Slack is a communication, a chat app for teams and companies, and it has a feature, a blocked previews feature. So in the chat, you can post links and those links get a nice preview as can be seen here. However, administrators, they can block certain domains from showing previews to reduce clutter, etc. However, this researcher found that if you add a trailing dot to the end of a domain, then you can bypass this feature because the URL parser will not see it as the same domain. Now, this is obviously not a finding of great severity. However, it is a very interesting one because you should probably remember to use this trailing dot trick to fool any other URL parser that, that you might know of. Joops, a congratulations on your 1000 USD bounty. This is Bug Bounty Recap. It's the 19th of January and let's get into it. The phone numbers of arbitrary users could be disclosed on Zenly. Now Zenly is an app where you can see your friends and family on a map and you can interact with them. However, this app has a friend request functionality where you can request other people to become your friend. And when you're friends with somebody, you can then see their phone number. However, this researcher found that if you send a friend request to somebody, that the response by the server to that friend request will be your own data along with the data on that user that you're requesting, which contains their phone number. So you can just send a friend request to any username and get the phone number of that username without that person actually even seeing the request or accepting it or whatnot. So yet another hacker, a huge congratulations on this 750 USD bounty. 